Look around in your general chemistry class, and if you went to UCLA like I did, you'll find 300 other pre-meds in the same classroom with 300 other pre-meds waiting right outside the door for the next lecture. And don't forget the 300 pre-meds at home working on practice problems who come in for the afternoon lecture. Out of those 1,000 pre-meds, less than half will end up putting on a white coat. Most will let go of their doctor dreams. And so today I'll share a couple reasons why going pre-med might not be the right decision for you and when to start thinking about quitting. Number one, if you want to be a doctor only because of parental pressure, this may not be the right career for you. I grew up in a Vietnamese household and what that meant for my childhood was that there were only two career paths being a doctor or being an engineer. There is absolutely no evidence of any other Vietnamese person in America being successful that most of our aunts, uncles, and fathers and mothers know about. And so becoming an actuary, working in film and TV, becoming a lawyer or an accountant or a consultant, those were things that our communities did not really have a lot of exposure to. In today's society, there are many more examples of people from almost every culture being successful in almost every industry. There are Asian professional basketball players like Jeremy Lin. And specifically in medicine, a field traditionally dominated by men, there are more female medical students than male medical students every single year now. If you don't see yourself becoming a doctor for any of your own internal reasons and parental pressure is a big driving force for you, then consider having that difficult conversation with your family sooner rather than later. Letting go does not mean you gave up. Letting go does not mean that you couldn't cut it. And letting go does not mean that you automatically are going to start flipping burgers at a McDonald's. Not becoming a doctor and spending four years, $200,000 of debt to get there just means that you've made the courageous decision to actually start doing what you want to do and to live your life for yourself and not for your parents. Every year, over 50,000 pre-meds apply to medical school and over 60% don't get into a single one. If this video hasn't been completely trashed thus far, I highly encourage you to take a look at the free resources we have in our description box below. Click the link in the description box to find out more. And for now, let's go back to the video. Number two, you hate people and you're becoming a doctor for the respect. There are many fields of medicine that people believe don't really work with people. Things like pathologists that look at slides all day, anesthesiologists that put patients to sleep, and surgeons who really just operate on a square on the human body. And the truth is, even if you are any of those specialties, you will have to love working with other people. Surgeons talk to their patients all the time in clinic and man an entire operating room filled with circulating nurses, patients, anesthesiologists, and scrub techs and administration. They work with a ton of people. And anesthesiologists, they communicate with their patients. Just having met them, having to build that bond so quickly with a person in front of them who is trusting their life to the doctor. And of course, during the case, they have to communicate with surgeons and nurses and students and residents and everyone on the team making sure that the patient is safe. And to the point about respect, medicine is not the same as it was in 1960, where the doctor told you what to do and that was the end of the conversation. Healthcare today is a bi-directional conversation between patient and physician, and patients have their own opinions that they get from the internet, other friends, their own research. And with this trend of patient agency and patient empowerment, there are a lot of people who do not like, do not trust doctors. I personally have been yelled at, spit on, hit, and you have to be okay with that as a doctor. You have to be able to understand that you are not a god in their eyes and that your profession doesn't automatically earn respect. Respect is built, it's earned with every new patient that you meet. And if you expected medicine to be different, then that is also a consideration to think about 
when deciding if you want to become a doctor. Number three, you're allergic to working hard. Modern day medical school admissions is undervaluing the GPA, MCAT, peer IQ, and intellect of pre-meds. And in its place, they are starting to overvalue and weigh more heavily teamwork, dedication, communication, these softer skills that make you a better team player. Above all else, the trait that I think gets most medical students through residency and beyond is an unbelievable work ethic. Getting into medical school, going through medical school, going through residency, and becoming an attending is work after work after work after work, and it never really ends. If that isn't something that you want for your young 20s or your young 30s, it's something to consider about when thinking about quitting pre-med. Reason number four, you don't actually like science or helping people. Some of my personal favorite moments in the hospital are honestly quite mundane. For example, it's taking a picture of a person's x-ray, showing the patient the x-ray, and walking him through where the heart is, what side is left, what side is right, what we are looking for on this x-ray, and reassuring them that there is nothing going on with them today. And reassuring the patient because of the image, the blood work, and me physically listening to their lungs, I feel very confident that they're safe. That is a very rewarding part, using science to help other people feel better about why they came to the hospital. I like helping people, but I don't save lives every single day. I like science, but not every single case is extremely complex and requires all of my thought power and education. A lot of medicine is routine, guideline-based, and fundamental. And being a doctor is liking science and medicine so much that you're okay with some of the more mundane examples. Reason number five to consider quitting pre-med is that you aren't ready for such a long long-term commitment. You may have other things in your life that you want to consider in the short term. I personally have many pre-med friends who put their doctor dreams on pause to become amateur League of Legends players, line cooks at popular Michelin star restaurants in San Francisco, and one of the most popular TikTok animators. All of these folks have done very well and have never looked back on their doctor dreams. And equally so, I have other pre-med friends who have moved on from being a doctor to consider healthcare administration and healthcare consulting to become biomedical researchers or even high school physics teachers. And after exploring those careers, all three of them said that's not for me, return back to pre-med and are now medical students. You can always explore something in the short term and medicine will always be here for you if it is right for you. So if you're not ready to commit to four years of medical school, at least four to seven years of residency, one to three years of fellowship, then consider putting your pre-med dreams on pause. And lastly, reason number seven to consider quitting pre-med is that you're smart, you're dedicated, you work hard, and you were told that those types of people go to medicine. I think this is a huge misconception about doctors and where smart people should take their talents. I think medicine needs passionate and dedicated people who like science and love helping people. The field of medicine certainly would love to have more geniuses. However, if you think your talents and your intellect are better served in another industry, in another place where you are more passionate, I think you should go there and develop the next new biomedical technology or start the next huge company that lowers prices for pharmaceutical drugs or become that revolutionary author that changes an entire culture's perspective on whatever topic you're passionate about. Those are seven reasons to consider quitting pre-med, but here are two reasons that I often hear about that I actually disagree with. Number one, do not consider becoming a doctor if you're afraid of the financial constraints or you're scared of the debt. Yes, it is true that the average medical student debt is in the order of $200,000. And while that is a real concern, I believe that if you want to be a doctor, a lot of medical schools are making paying for education more accessible for many communities. Need-based financial aid increases by the year, and 
I swear every other month I hear about a new medical school going completely tuition free. There are increasingly robust loan forgiveness programs and many options for you to help battle that mountain of debt. I personally would hate for this to be the sole reason why a great doctor doesn't end up choosing the field. The second reason I've heard on why to quit medicine that I personally don't agree with is the emotional burden of becoming a doctor. Yes, mental health and physician suicide are real problems in society today. And certainly many patients and many family members can hurt providers because they themselves are in so much pain. This is a conversation you'll have to have with yourself and your own mental health. However, I do believe that the difficult emotional situations are what is so beautiful about being human and becoming a doctor. For example, my colleague cared for a patient whose family was very demanding at all hours of the day. No nurses, no residents was able to get blood unless they had an ultrasound machine and they were either a senior resident an attending or an anesthesiologist. And during her hospital course, she got sicker and sicker and the demands continued to escalate and escalate. Unfortunately, she passed away peacefully in her sleep in the middle of the night. And I'll never forget the 20 plus members of her family surrounding her at bedside, most crying, most celebrating her life, all in pain and how each and every single one of them went to my colleague, the doctor who cared for their loved one, and thanked him profusely for all the hard work that he had put in over the last week. It sucks, it hurts, and it's devastating. But perhaps if you are the person who resonates with that type of story, you're the person that we need putting on a white coat. If all this video did was increase your commitment to becoming a doctor, then let's make sure you get in. If so, you'll love this application breakdown where I review a 3.96 GPA 517 MCAT who gets rejected from all 37 medical schools she applies to. We break down every single part of her primary application so that you know exactly what went wrong. Remember, it takes four plus years to build a competitive pre-med application, and it really only takes four seconds for an admissions committee member to send a rejection letter. Thank you for your time. I hope this video has helped you think about whether becoming a doctor is right for you. And if you feel like becoming a doctor is right for you, thank you for being a part of our community, and I'll see you in the next one.